is Alex and welcome to Vegan with a Passport. Currently, we're in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And today, we're gonna be exploring the vegan scene. This includes checking out the markets, a variety of international cuisines, vegan fine dining restaurants, desserts, vegan chain restaurants, and of course, the infamous Canadian poutines. So let's just go ahead and get started. Let's start our Vancouver foodie adventure by checking out the all-vegetarian restaurant called Heirloom, where most items on the menu are vegan by default. And if the item's not already vegan, then most, if not all, items can be customized to be vegan. I first started off with the Garden of Eden mocktail, which had grapefruit, lime, basil, lavender, and aquafaba. The mocktail had a slightly sour taste from the citrus, but not in a bad way, and overall it tasted refreshing, which I enjoyed. Also, this restaurant serves vegan buttermilk pancakes all day long, honey. Despite the menu saying that they serve fig and pear compote pancakes, earlier this month they actually switched to mango and passion fruit pancakes. I found the pancakes to be very mildly dense, just very mildly, but overall the pancakes were delicious. The mango and passion fruit gave them a tropical taste, and also the pancakes weren't too sweet, which I enjoyed. But you also can control the sweetness with the maple syrup on the side. And that butter on top, oh my goodness, it really made them taste like buttermilk pancakes. And the nuts on top tasted toasted, which really enhanced the flavor. Now, we have to check out this all-vegan Middle Eastern restaurant called the Olive Eatery. This restaurant primarily focuses on cuisine from Lebanon, Iran, Turkey, and Palestine. I first started off with this coffee tahini smoothie, which had a lovely coffee taste and was creamy from the tahini. I then ordered shish kebab, which was based from soy curls, and it also came in a bowl with garlic sauce, potatoes, pickled cucumber, red cabbage, parsley, tahini, hummus, and pita bread. This was definitely my favorite vegan shish kebab I've ever had and one of the top vegan Middle Eastern dishes I've had in general. The flavor was unique and whoever was in the kitchen was extremely talented. While the kebab was slightly chewy, it was still easy to digest. And it had a meaty flavor. And it also had that tanginess from the tahini sauce and also that parsley on top gave it a lovely herb note. Also the sides such as the pickled cucumbers and cabbage paired well with the dish and the hummus in the pita bread was also delicious. For dessert I ordered kanafe which is a dish with shredded filo, vegan mozzarella, pistachio and rose syrup that you can control the sweetness of the dish with. The kanafe was crunchy flaky and delicious, it had a mild cheesy taste to it which paired well with the sweetness of the rose syrup. Now let's treat ourselves to a vegan fine dining experience at a restaurant called Nightshade. By the way, this all vegan restaurant also has a Michelin bib. I first decided to order the French horn scallops with spring peas and asparagus puree. Also, it had pickled saffron pearls and nori crisp. The dish also came with this celery salad, which was so good, oh my goodness, and it tasted fresh. Also, the asparagus was grilled, which made it really easy to chew, and again, it was delicious. And there also surprisingly was a seafood taste to the scallops. And the sauce had a lovely herb taste to it, and it was creamy. I then decided to order the pesto croquettes. I personally felt as if they needed more parmesan to make the flavor pop because I really could only taste the flavor in the spots where the parmesan was at. And to be honest, I really couldn't taste the flavor of the pesto. Now to end the croquettes on a positive note, they were very crunchy which I did enjoy the texture of. 
And then the last savory dish I ordered was ravioli, which was stuffed with whipped potato and cheese. The ravioli was tasty and had a light tomato sauce taste from the sauce, and you also could taste the fresh vegetables bursting in the sauce. All of the vegetables in general in my dishes tasted so fresh, and I was wondering if the farm was in the kitchen because, wow. Then for my drink, I decided to go for a non-alcoholic beverage. I opted for the LHR Margarita, which had free spirit tequila, lemon, lemongrass, and hibiscus. And it was delicious with the flavors and it surprisingly tasted like alcohol. And then lastly for dessert, I had Vietnamese coffee creme brulee. It was topped with whipped cream and cacao nibs and it was from Diliumptious. Now after that culinary experience, if you're looking for a way to cool down during the summer or even during the winter, no judgment here, there's an all vegan little windows doll called Vegan Pudding Company. Here you'll find a plethora of coconut and soy based puddings and you can even get ice cream and whipped cream on the top. I decided to get the coffee flavored pudding which was coconut based. The hardening of the layer on top of the pudding actually had a coffee taste and it actually reminded me of eating a creme brulee. I found the pudding to have a very strong coconut taste compared to a coffee taste for me personally, so next time I would prefer to try a soy based pudding. That way I can just taste more of the flavor notes of the pudding flavor. The ice cream was also coconut based, however it was delicious and there was a great balance between the coconut and vanilla flavor and it was also topped with the coconut whipped cream and chocolate drizzle. Now let's go to Commercial Street, the infamous street known for its plethora of restaurants. And on this street, you'll actually find an all vegan Vietnamese restaurant called Viet Family, the vegan house. The first time I visited, I ended up ordering this eggplant chicken dish, which came with vegan oyster sauce. It was bursting with flavor. The oyster sauce gave the dish a lovely creamy consistency and the texture of the chicken was soft and easy to chew. I also had this black tea with strawberries and oh my goodness, this has to be one of my favorite teas that I've ever had. The strawberry flavor was so rich and it ended up just being such a refreshing drink. And then the next time I visited, I ended up ordering the tofu pho. I hope I got that correctly. They tried to teach me how to say it. Oh goodness. Anyway, it had a delicious tasting broth and the vegetables tasted fresh. Lastly, I ordered the summer fizz beverage, which is a drink with pomegranate, lemonade, and butterfly pea tea. And it tasted like a fruity mocktail. Now we must explore the all vegan Japanese restaurant that literally just opened two months ago. The name of the restaurant is Vegan Shuku and they have an overwhelmingly large menu, mainly serving sushi and there literally were at least 30 sushi to choose from, I'm not joking. And they also have a plethora of appetizers to choose from. With that being said, I first started with a side of calamari. I found the calamari to be crunchy on the outside and to have a mild seafood flavor. And the sauce the calamari came with was creamy. And it added a mild sweet and spicy kick to the calamari. For the sushis, I ordered the paradise roll, which included fried yam, vegan cream cheese, spicy mayo, and yum sticks. 
And I also ordered the shuku roll, which included spicy vegan crab meat, vegan salmon, avocado, mango, and vegan fish eggs. While the paradise roll was good, I did find it to have quite a bit of yam, kind of taking it away from the other elements in the sushi. I did enjoy the crunchy element of the yam sits on top, which did add a fun taste on the texture though. But the shuku roll, oh my goodness, it was bursting with flavor. The meaty savory elements also mixed with the sweet mango elements and also those vegan fish eggs really added flavor to the sushi. Now it's time to explore another vegan fine dining restaurant with unique dishes to try called Folk. And last month on their first birthday, they actually hosted a special one night only pop-up Italian menu with items that aren't typically available on the traditional menu. There were so many items to choose from, my stomach couldn't handle. I started off with this pumpkin pesto gnocchi which included kale flour and walnut. There was a light pumpkin flavor with the pumpkin pesto and the gnocchi had a nice semi-soft texture and was crunchy from the walnuts. And then I ordered an onion and caper pizza with white sauce. The pizza had a delicious and creamy cheese. The greens also were crunchy and overall the pizza was flavorful. And then for dessert I got semifredo which is a version of ice cream that stays soft and creamy. And it can be thought of as a combination of ice cream and cake. It was also topped with strawberry and pickled rhubarb. And it was also infused with this Italian lemon liquor. The semifredo was creamy and the layer on the inside gave it a little bit of crunchiness. And it was also crunchy from the nuts on top. And the pickled rhubarb and the strawberry added a delicious, sweet, and tangy flavor. Now let's shift gears to another all vegan Middle Eastern restaurant. They originally started as a food truck, but then additionally added a brick and mortar. They have a huge overwhelming menu of veganized Middle Eastern eats to choose from. Oh goodness. I first ordered the glowing gap mocktail, which included butterfly pea flour syrup, lime, tonic, and soda. And it had a lovely floral and refreshing taste. And then for my main dish, I went for shushuka. However, the restaurant put their own twist on it by adding vegan sausage instead of poached eggs. It had a rich and tangy tasting tomato sauce, and it had more tanginess from the tzatziki sauce. The dish also had garlic, onion, carrots, jalapeno, bell peppers, and also was topped with yams. And then for the first dessert, I had to go with the chocolate raspberry milkshake. The milkshake was sour from the raspberries and just had small hints of chocolate notes. Also, I found it to be missing that cream taste that US American milkshakes are just known for having. But overall, I still enjoyed my beverage. I have to give credit for that little cream pie that was topped on the milkshake though. My goodness, it was so soft. And the cream just melted right into my mouth. It was very delicate, not too sweet. The chocolate from the pie wasn't too strong and it had a light raspberry taste. I really enjoyed that. Also, the whipped cream on top of the milkshake had a very strong coconut taste. And then for dessert number two, I ended up getting baklava drizzle and orange blossom and rose water serve. And it was dusted with cardamom. Despite the cardamom and the orange blossom, I really couldn't taste any orange fruit notes. It just tasted like a typical baklava to me, but regardless, the baklava was delicious. It was flaky and had a great balance of sweetness. It also came with a side of coconut vanilla soy ice cream, and yes, you could taste the coconut, but it is coconut ice cream after all, but it did have a great balance of coconut, vanilla, and it wasn't overly sweet. 
Speaking of pizza, let's check out an all vegan pizza shop called Virtuous Pie. This is actually a chain restaurant on the west coast of the USA and Canada. And here you'll find a variety of pizza flavors, pasta skillet dishes, and even desserts. I decided to order the Sergeant Pepperoni. I found the pepperoni to be delicious with the meaty pepperoni taste. And the Parmesan had a very strong cheesy taste. Although I personally did find the pie to have too much lettuce, especially since the vegan honey on top of the lettuce was just making the lettuce soggy. Now with that being said, I did love the spice and the vegan hot honey. As for the crust, it was very thin and very crunchy. Again, this is a personal preference, but I would have preferred for my crust to be thicker, primarily because with the way it was charred and how thin it was, it just ended up tasting burnt. Now despite some of my criticisms, I still did like some elements of my pizza, but with the amount of people that were telling me to visit this restaurant, I did find it to be overrated based on the pizza I had, but I would have to try it multiple times before I can really come to that conclusion. Now I do believe in redemptions and what better way to do that than to order dessert. I ended up ordering this chocolate chip cookie sandwich which had raspberry cheesecake ice cream inside it. And oh my goodness, it was so delicious. The cookie was so soft and chewy. Oh my goodness. And it wasn't overly sweet. And as for the raspberry cheesecake ice cream, you literally could taste the chunks of the raspberry cheesecake embedded in the ice cream. And the flavor paired well with the chocolate chips and the ice cream was creamy. Now let's go check out another all vegan chain restaurant called Meat, where you'll find locations in Vancouver and Victoria, British Columbia. They have a huge menu with a variety of options to choose from, like a lot of options. I first ended up ordering a green juice, which really just came bottled and then they gave me a glass on the side, I guess just to feel a little fancy, you know, a little bougie, although it was still tasty. Anyway, for my main, I was craving a poutine and it had quite a few interesting poutines to choose from. I ended up going with the Philly cheesesteak poutine. It was delicious, cheesy, had a mild spice with the jalapenos, and somewhat of a meaty taste. And it also had a peppery taste from the bell peppers. I then ordered a cronut, which is basically a croissant which tastes just like a donut. And it ended up being a very crunchy and flaky croissant which tasted just like a filled donut. It was filled with Boston cream which added to the flavor and I loved it. Also, I enjoyed how it wasn't overly sweet and I literally could hear the crunch as I bit into the cronut. There's no harm in having more poutine, right? Well, let's go check out another place where we can get some vegan poutine. Fritz European Fry House is a poutine shop which has a vegan poutine option. Just be careful when ordering as they also have a vegetarian gravy which isn't vegan. I requested the vegan soy bacon, the vegan gravy, and also the vegan cheese. The fries were crunchy, the gravy was savory and thick, and the bacon was crispy. Also, the cheese added a nice flavor to the poutine and overall, I enjoyed my dish. Now for the next restaurant, if you're at work or somewhere else, you may want to lower your volume because of the name of the restaurant. It's called Perverted. Um, I, I, I don't get it either, but okay. Anyway, it's a popular ice cream shop that has vegan options. 
And when I mean poplar, the line is long. For reference, I waited 25 minutes for my ice cream. And most of their ice creams can be made vegan. This is not to be confused with plant-based on their menu, but they do specify the difference between the two on the menu, so there's no reason to really get confused between the two. Anyway, the base of the vegan ice cream is soy-based, and I decided to go for the Vicious Sid, which is basically a potato chip and cookie soft serve. Now, I was already having issues when I first got my ice cream because everyone in front of me ordered dairy ice cream and they got their ice cream in a cone and mine came in a cup for some reason. Do vegans not like cones or something? After addressing this, they offered to remake my ice cream, but I'm not for food waste for the sake of aesthetics, so I asked for it on the side. And yes, all the cones at the restaurant are vegan by default and that's how the ice cream also comes by default unless you ask for it in a cup. So it makes the situation even more perplexing to me. Also later after leaving, I realized all those yummy looking toppings in the photo, such as the chip and cookie crumble was missing. I'm not sure if those actually weren't vegan or something as advertised or if they just decided to forfeit those two just because. But that literally was the entire flavor profile of the ice cream. At this point, I'm surprised my cup even had ice cream in it. Now as for the ice cream, it was nice and creamy and not too sweet. It actually was one of the creamiest soy based ice creams I've ever had and it was the only part I liked to be honest. The dry chocolate shell on top of the ice cream had a very, very rich chocolate taste and I had enough after a few bites. The chocolate ice cream cone tasted just like a regular ice cream cone with no chocolate flavor. And to top it off, literally top it off. There was only one salt and vinegar chip added to my ice cream. I guess I mainly am complaining because I feel as if if I had ordered dairy ice cream, most of this, if not any of this, would have happened. And I found this to be overpriced considering I paid nine Canadian dollars. And I found the experience to just be lackluster and it was not worth the 25 minute wait in my opinion. I could have gone somewhere else, honey. All right, let's move to something more positive, somewhere where there's lots of water and tranquility. Let's go check out Granville Island Public Market. This is a daily market that's open on Granville Island, right in the city. There's even a vegan Vietnamese restaurant in the market called Chow Veggie Express, but unfortunately, I had already just had a meal. I instead decided to opt for a snack at a bakery called Laurel's Fine Foods. Considering I had good luck with their vegan desserts in the past, I decided to try their vegan sausage roll. And um, how do I kindly say this? Um, that, that wasn't my thing. However, I was later informed from a local that those sausage rolls were actually mass produced and then are distributed to different markets and stores throughout British Columbia. So technically, the bakery didn't make the rolls. Anyway, I later got a sweet tooth and ended up going to this gelato place where the first row of the frozen desserts are all vegan. I ended up going for sour apple and fizzy peach. And they ended up tasting more like candy than having a refreshing taste to them, which isn't surprising given the name of them. But it's still something fun to try if you want to experience something different. One thing I do want to point out about the market though is I felt like most food establishments had at least one vegan meal option, which compared to years ago, that wasn't the case. Now let's go check out the Richmond Night Market, which is a festival that happens every summer right outside of Vancouver, British Columbia in the city of Richmond. Now I didn't film much here, apologies, but I did get a couple of items and I did see other vegan dishes available. I first went to Milk Chow where they have fruity milk beverages available which are infused with butterfly pea tea. However, you can actually ask for oat milk instead of cow milk for your beverage. I ended up getting a strawberry flavor and also got a mango flavor and enjoyed my beverages. They were refreshing and delicious. I also got a rotato which is just a spar potato. I ended up getting the ketchup flavor, but unbeknownst to me, it came as a seasoning instead of just like a ketchup sauce. So I would personally ask if there's milk powder in that. I don't know about y'all, but I'm always paranoid about stuff like that. There also was a sea salt flavor, which may just be the safer route to go. 
The other offerings I saw included a vegan kanjat noodle boots. I also saw deep fried tofu, veggie spring rolls, sorbets, and also a veggie stir fry rice dish. Also, if you haven't gotten a chance to watch my last video, it was basically about how I got all the way from the southwest portion of the United States all the way up here to Vancouver, British Columbia without flying. It was literally 50 hours of three trains and a bus. And I show you what it's like to be vegan doing those train journeys and just what it's like to take the rail across the USA. So I went ahead and linked that video into the description down below for your viewing pleasure. Thank you so, so much for watching. And if you enjoyed, be sure to stick around for more vegan travel adventures. And until next time, bye.